Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Labor Day for everybody in the USA. Still here doing a live stream. Futures open, as I talked about yesterday. Uh, financial futures close at noon central time and the crude energy futures close at 1.30 we had the OPEC cut, not a cut, announced this morning. They're going to return to August pumping levels in October. It's about a thousand, a hundred thousand barrel uh, reduction in pumping capacity. Eh. Market, reason I'm pointing that out, we do have a potential double bottom. It was uh, closed on the one hour there. I am watching, it's a four hour pattern. That's as well for, and I'm watching to see if it closes on the four hour. It's got about 55 minutes left. And so far is getting a fair amount of price rejection. And if that triggered, I mean, that would only return possibly to the mid 93 price targets. If you look at that on the daily and it's against the rotation zone, first target would be the most, the highest probability 191.50. It's, it, it's just a dent into a little clear path move. Uh, does not change anything with the longer term topping pattern. Expecting lighter viewership today. Again, it's Labor Day in the USA. Stocks are closed. We're going to do a live sector analysis. Good morning, Patrick. Thank you for being here. I know there's a few other people watching on who are hiding in the background, but if you're watching this on demand, uh, thank you for tuning in at a later time. Just wanted to cover that crude update. The financial futures, just for the point of a uh, very, very small range, very, very flat today. You can see right here, not much going on. Nothing's really changed from the analysis yesterday with the key levels. So if you want to know more about that, please watch the recorded stream from yesterday really at this point though let's take a look at some sector analysis all right all right the uh s p back in long-term sell mode sell mode so what does that mean? It means we're more aggressive with selling the rallies, selling rallies even more aggressively. So on any rallies that was what we're watching for, keep in mind, we still have a little more target left on the head and shoulders, but that's in sell mode right there on the S&P NASDAQ sell mode. So everything tipping back to sell mode Dow sell mode russell sell mode and uh, you still have things like the russell needs to hit the final sitting at the second target on the head and shoulders still has a fair amount down and i covered also yesterday what key levels i'm watching for in the short term for the probabilities to tip into retesting the june lows keep that in mind let's just peek on that dax which never Got to buy mode, so the DAX still sitting there weak. And, well, remember, we do have a potential double bottom a long way off from triggering. Interesting enough, if this keeps pulling back for a couple more weeks and comes back down to test the June low areas, and we get this still valid double bottom, by the time it triggers, it might also trigger a major reversal. A major reversal since the sell mode that triggered roughly back in uh, mid-September of last year. So a year ago, it's been in note sell mode. All right, with that, let's get to some sectors. Some sectors. Where are my sectors? Here we go. All right, XLE energy sector still in buy mode. I'm watching for some toppy price action in uh, crude, uh, besides this little mini double, we should still see some lower price action in crude. And in natty gas, there's a topping signal triggered and that would be for a short term pullback. So not surprised to see a little pullback, but a long way off from sell mode. So I am still bullish in the energy sector, but getting a little pickier with the plays. It's not just raging bull mode. Also, last week we closed 
the 62 and a half is 82 87 last week we closed at 82 84 so that probability wise did not shift it yet to a retest of the high area why is that off on the that was interesting maybe it did shift it yeah that was slightly off right there so yeah technically we did shift it so we should actually see some still upward price action after this pull back just wanted to correct that level. So energy still is bullish, a little pickier with the plays. Real estate never triggering this little mini potential double bottom. Real estate shifting back to sell mode. Uh, expecting it at this point. Remember, returning to that 50 to 62 and a half. And we did get the rollover play. And now the long-term sell play here. Where's the key areas I'm watching in real estate? So right now. It's really not doing anything. Some of these levels all, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, pulling right back to that 62 and a half. No close below that. That would just mean probability wise, we'd have the uh, edge in our favor to return to 3926 to 3932. But we should see continued downward pressure. So not touching anything in real estate at all. XLF. Your financial futures tipping to sell mode again. So a lot of this stuff back to sell mode. It looks like a lot of my levels shifted off recently. That's interesting with trading view. Uh, right down to six to an half, but no close below it. Although back in sell mode. So even on rallies, expecting us to at some point test the junior lows. But to financial sector on any rallies looking for uh sell plays only xlk shifting to sell mode and closing below the 62 and a half so this is technology so more aggressive on the sell side with technology i also went over components of the spy the spiders yesterday on the live stream you might want to check that out because i listed some key levels and there's a lot of tech stocks there's google there, well, I don't know what you put Tesla as. Is it automotive tech or blah? But it, you know what the key levels for those to shift to uh, more aggressive bearish mode. Some things have already shifted, like a Microsoft has already shifted to more aggressive uh, bearish mode. So the Apple has not. But this means looking to sell any rallies in tech stocks. Now we probability wise at least favor in the sector to return to the june lows 126.14 to 122.47 so unless there's something a fantastic play to the long side in technology steering clear of it for the time being xli industrials no shift yet Pull back here, but no shift. So industrials, remember we had that double bottom, completing the double bottom, moving back down, but no long-term sell yet. And still in the potential reversal zone. The potential reversal zone based off harmonic patterns are between the 50 and 62 and a half. So I could continue to watch for any bullish plays uh, in industrials, but they have to be strong, bullish plays. By the way, before we keep going, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing, ringing that bell, and hitting the like button. Longer-term subscribers, leave some comments and like the videos. Also today, new Futures Edge Jim Iurio podcast dropping pretty much every Monday. I am on this latest episode if you want to know my longer term thoughts on some of the markets so that is out there now tune in since it's a holiday after this live stream is done or if you're watching it on demand and you haven't watched it yet when you're done watching this one on demand watch the uh jim iurio futures edge podcast big shout out to bob iacchino and jim iurio for having me on xly Triggering our double top pattern. Not triggering a long-term sell, but still triggering the double top. Interesting in consumer discretionary. 
watching for the key pullback, not triggering the long-term sell, still on that shorter-term sell. We still, oh, sorry, that was a head and shoulders pattern, not a double top, head and shoulders pattern. Coming down to the second target, little bounce up, still watching for the lower price action, 149.92, so not really bullish on consumer discretionary, but if we come down here and don't tip it in the long-term sell, we could still look for some interesting consumer discretionary plays going into the holiday season. If this does tip to long-term sell, then it will be more so hands off on consumer discretionary. XLP, consumer staples triggering this big double bottom. Nowhere near a stop level, but pulling back and no, not a long-term trigger. So I am still looking for long-term consumer staples plays. There aren't a lot of fundamental great plays in there, so I'm a little picky, and it's got to be a strong setup, but strong bullish patterns in consumer staples are still playable from the long side for me. So do watch for that. You are very welcome. Thank you for typing in a comment. Welcome to the channel. Is that Guanaco? I don't want to butcher your name. I hope I didn't. I am very bad pronouncing things, especially names. It's one of my weaknesses in life. Fully will admit to that. One of my strengths, I think, is technical analysis. Pronouncing stuff, pronunciation is a weakness. Uh, consumer staples. Also pulling back between the 50 and the 62 and a half half and pretty much closing at this. So anywhere in here, I'm watching for a reversal, especially if I get a shorter term reversal, I will key in on more consumer staples plays. Speaking of consumer discretionary, I wouldn't want to be Ryan Cohen right now. No, I would not. And we briefly touched on BBBY and the sad situation with the, uh, Chief Financial Officer who committed suicide. But that's still on the, the CFO. But Ryan Cohen, I, if if we don't get some serious looking into, even before the CFO nightmare, and if people don't know what uh, I'm talking about, the CFO for Best Buy uh, jumped out of his window in his New York City apartment. And there's, uh, there's lawsuits alleging there was a Ryan Cohen and Ryan Cohen approached him with potential a stock manipulation aspect. We know Ryan Cohen also bought those way out of the money calls. Uh, and then we had the stock pumps for into the retail. And we had the little pump up move. And then Ryan Cohen sold everything into that pump up move. So there's a lot of smoke at least around here. Hopefully we'll get a thorough investigation with the SEC uh, and Possibly some criminal organizations, but not holding my breath given these markets. Sorry for the sidetrack. Consumer staples, thank you for being here, Sterling. Uh, no, I'm on this on sector overview. I don't put the moving averages just on here. We can always glance, like I can switch it. I can switch it. There's the overall ones we use on a daily basis, but for sector overview, I use this. So, consumer staples, still not in long-term sell. XLV, we had the little mini top, double top, hitting the targets, continued the pullback. Also, oops, also, uh, not yet shifting to long-term sell, not yet shifting. See, all these ran up, oh, not all of them, but a lot of them ran up between the 50 and the 62 and a half on the upside and then rotated back down. This no close above those levels. And that was slightly off again. I'll have to correct all these. I don't know what happened here. Interesting, 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 but... Right here, no long-term sell and look, bouncing off your 62 and a half level, you gotta earn the 62 and a half uh, level. So can I still look for healthcare plays? Yes, yes, but it, it has to be a very strong setup. Also, 
We went over stuff yesterday. For example, uh, Johnson and Johnson and United Health Group talked about the key levels I was watching in that, and they make up in the SPY 1.46 for UNH and 1.27 for J and J. So close to uh, th just under three percent is made up of healthcare. So gonna keep a close eye on this. It's very close to tipping back to a longer term sell. We It can still be played to the upside, but it has to be strong plays. Strong plays only. XLB, Material Select Spider. Shifting to long term sell. Also remember, double top pattern. Virtually all the targets are hit. This, when you get this little reversal bar on here, I consider all the targets hit. I'm going to leave it on here. But that's where we sit, and we've gone into long-term sell. All right, so where does that leave us with the harmonics also? Close below the 62.5 weekly basis, so now we should favor 71.47 to 69.98 next target area. Even on rallies, we'll watch for rollover plays in material select spiders. So those are there could be some very good short opportunities. Again, one of the things I get asked constantly is, well, how do I find these? All right, I know you said material select spiders or technology watch for short plays. Let me go through this. Let me show you again. That's a bonus for you watching on here. Uh, just like yesterday, go to ETF.com. Here's, again, we went through these yesterday, the top 10 plays of the spiders. But if you go to ETF.com and you type in one of your ETFs, you can see, so exact example, XLB. Material select. All right, we get material select. And you can see some of the holdings, the top 10 weightings. You can even drill down into the minor ones. But if you wanted to look for short plays, this is the great way to start because looking at some of the top 10 weightings, you're going to get a fair amount of potential plays. If you don't find anything, you can drill down. Okay, you can definitely drill down at times. Uh, I'll have to do that after this. But look, this gives you an area to start looking at. And you can always look up the whole bunch of what the holdings are. I generally like to focus on the top 10 plays first. That gives you a little clue. So if you're looking for both short and long setups, that's the best way to start with your research. And then you can build out individual ETF sector lists if you're really ambitious. You know, I don't like to go most much below the top uh, 20 plays in any sector. Else it gets thinner and it's such a minor contribution. Uh, I, I generally, if I can't find anything in the top 20 plays, eh, then it's it's not worth me going. Hello, is it? Thank you for being here. Again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Holiday Monday in the USA. XLB material select short plays. Uh, Comstock's never tipped into buy mode. Been in sell mode since last since January. All right. So yes, you could. This could be a bigger, a massive double bottom on something like a monthly basis down here. Long way off from triggering. I talked even before on this rally. This is for uh, short plays only. Still, short plays only on XLC. We're way below that 62.5. We should easily favor the return to uh, lows from June. This Comstock's shorts only. That's all I have to say. There's nothing I'm looking at because you got the whole weight of the sector against you. XLU Utilities, little pullback here. Still in bull mode. Way off from tipping. So if there's great setups in utilities, that's something I will look for bullish plays in utilities. Again, 
Oh, what what bullish play should I focus on? Well, again, we're not giving specific recommendations in here, but if you come to ETF.com and get down to your utilities, and I'm not logged into this right now, but you can start to see, all right, what are some things to focus on? Here you go. There's some energy plays in here also. So we know energies in bull mode. We know utilities are in bull mode. Here you go. Watch for some potential bullish reversals, bullish pullback patterns. And those are things that could be good setups. This is the point of the sector analysis. Let's figure out where to focus our resources since none of us have infinite time, both to the long and short side. And if you only trade from the long side, then fine. The sectors that are in strong sell modes, I pretty much avoid unless you get a fantastic high probability reversal pattern. XRT, retail, Never shifted to buy mode, in sell mode. Where do we sit now with the pullback pattern? So retail never shifted here. Retail, no shifty shifty. Let me just make sure I get the levels right again. Don't know what they did here. Clear close below 62 and a half, so we should probability wise retest. I sound like a broken record, but it's important to know this retest June lows and probably break them. Remember, you can also use your reverse harmonics for the next targets down once some of these lows are broken. Boom, we got our target levels. And then we even have target clusters because I have the topping harmonics on here also. And we are into an advanced clear path move. And, and look at this, cluster area, Breakout zone. So when this, I expect this, the retail ETF to break to new lows well before this bear market is over and I have my next major target area. Can you trade the ETFs? Yes, you can. You can just go straight to the ETFs, especially some of the weaker ones and trade them to the short side or set up option plays in them. This is just sort of beneficial to do it live occasionally. I'll get to that in a second, Sterling. Look at uh, transportation ETF. Still technically not in sell mode long term. Could not get above the 62 and a half and now pulling back. So hitting that shorter term reversal. Remember, you can have short term reversals and long term reversals. If it pulls back more, it will tip to sell mode. What's the key level I'm watching for? Now, if we find a short-term bottoming pattern in here, this can still be played to the long side. We start getting the close blow, 222.31, and eh, then it will probably, next week it will tip to longer-term sell mode. Remember, we had that little mini double down there. We got some bullish plays, but no more. I still, if there's a transportation, really good bullish play, would still consider it other than that. Pretty much hands off waiting for next week. SMH, bat is never tipped to buy mode, bat still in sell mode, still in long term top pattern mode. Breaking down here, short term. So, semis, we had those sell patterns and semis, a couple of them been hit. Back below the 62 and a half, favoring a retest of the lows, then favoring a return to the 179.24 area, which would complete the topping pattern, and you get a close below 179.56, we should see a much, much, much lower price action in semis. So guess what? Semis, from my perspective, are to be sold on rallies. DBC, still in buy mode. Pulling back, but still in buy mode. So if there's good, decent commodity plays can still be taken from the long side. DBA, uh, still in buy mode. Going into choppy mode. So there has to be a really strong setup in DBA. GDX, gold miners. The potential doubles off the table still nothing going watching for a longer term bottoming pattern but nothing going with the gold miners yet 
At some point, there will be good plays in this again, but nothing yet. VTV, Vanguard Value, ETF, where do we sit? Where do we sit? Right at that tipping point, but value not tipping to long-term sell just yet? Not tipping yet. Can we still look for value plays? Yes. What would take value plays off will be keying off 132.95 in the shorter term. But if I do spot value plays, even though it's close to reversing, we are in the potential reversal zone for a bullish play to the upside. So I'm keeping an eye on that. What would I be watching short term? 138. We start getting a daily close, a daily close back above 138. Uh, value plays are back on the table for me. VUG growth back to long term sell. We had the short term head and shoulders pattern. First, second, targets hit. Watching for this third target right down by major support. And that's on the daily, so it already shifted. This is where you combine, again, combined strategies. We got the shift back on the 26th to sell mode in the shorter term. Got to take advantage of that in the shorter term. Longer term now shifting the sell mode. So now we can roll things into longer term sell modes or look for bounce plays and then roll over plays in growth. So growth is another area for short plays. Let's see. Also, no close above that 62 and a half. Boom. Back lower. This is how you come up with your trading roadmap. Still sitting interesting enough in the potential reversal zone, but since it did tip to long term, it, it's still selling on rallies and then really focus on this 233.41. Close below that favors the retest of the June lows. Let's see. Sterling, what did you want to look at? Can you look at the 10-year yields? I'm thinking a pullback to 62.5 to resume the move back up to 87.5 of the retracement from June. Thoughts? What I'm watching on yields. First, let me get to just the notes. Here's what I'm keying off of just on the notes. Oops, I just want this one. Main watch list. Main watch list. Where it's a potential double bottom. I am watching still, we should still see some continued pullbacks in the notes to 115.07. Why am I, I, I like to still focus on the bonds more, uh, slightly more than the yields. I don't mind playing stuff, especially with the yield futures. Those are some great plays in there. And if you're looking at the yields right now, We're closed above the 62 and a half on the weekly basis. We should still technically see a return to possibly uh, 3.374, 3.375 in the yields. Now, can this be eventually traded as a sloppy double top with this hitch in there? Yes. And you can see it's a long way off from even tipping to a sell pattern. And we had that fake out with the uh, that little head and shoulders top. So I am being patient. We should still see a return up here. So are you asking? Are, should, at this point, any pullback would just be minor. If I'm watching the little minor pullback levels, I'd just be watching the key area. You're asking for the pullback to 62.5. Yeah. I'd be watching the pullbacks between about 3.1 to 3.129, 3.13 for a pullback and a rotation back up. That would be my pullback area. And you look at the yields on the four hour, it's uh, starting to get a little toppy in here. So that's why that's a great little pullback before the next move back up and then target the 3.374 area. What would start, uh, where would I personally use a stop? I would use a stop just below this 3%. Why not 3.007? Because that 3% is going to be a key level. And you have 
this little pivot right in there. So on this pullback, you could get decent reward to risk. You have a target here. So on a pullback, let's just pick, let's just even pick the upper end of it. So from the upper end, you know, you got a potential 3% to the upside from roughly there and then to the downside you know you're ah, that didn't work hold on to the downside you ease let's see 119 you got you can on that pullback easily have proper reward to risk If you needed a tighter stop, then I'd use about 3.0 this kilo back from the 30th of August. 3.05, so 3.049, 3.048. So that's what I am looking, that was a good question. Remember, if we're looking at the overall yield curve keep in mind we should see some continued steepening we went through this yesterday yes you have a bigger head and shoulders pattern you have a smaller double pattern the bigger head and shoulders which is also triggered favors the yield curve moved back to zero and remember on the acceleration back to zero and especially the break above zero favors an increased market sell-off over the next few months So that's where we sit. All right, everyone. Any other questions before I got to get back to some key things with some futures? Uh, we got the, let me peek in on crude. Is crude going to trigger? It might. It might trigger this double, even in the thinner markets. I don't like when these patterns trigger in thinner markets, but still got to play the probabilities. Probabilities actually drop slightly when they have triggered. I have tested that out when they do trigger in thinner markets. That's why I need this four hour close. If you're wondering why I can't wait for a daily close, because the pattern is not valid on the daily. It's valid on the four hour. Let's just peek in at Natty Gas too. Natty Gas, I went over this in the podcast. Pretty, uh, I'm watching for the pullback and then a potential reversal play back to the long side. Just glance in a couple other things. Uh, dollar index pausing at a key level. I am starting to watch with this little mini divergence for the pullback. And Euro, Euro got some pretty decent buying pressure back below the 23rd of August. So if that does hold, watch, we'll watch for a mini pop before the next rollover play because my target is 98.50. With that, oh, we'll peek at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, horizontal channel. It's either the, it favors the breakdown play below uh, 19.500. Next target below that would be 18.525 and then 17.570 are the targets to the downside, but that's where it favors. If it were to pop the upside, Major resistance to watch for another shorting play is 20,850. All right. Thank you for being here. Not seeing any new questions, so I will wrap this up for now. Thank you if you're watch, also watching it on demand. Uh, unless If there's some major setup appearing, we I might pop on briefly this afternoon. If not, I'll just come on tomorrow morning to get us prepared for uh, Tuesday through Thursday, short and trading week. Also, 60% for the 75 basis points. Remember, tomorrow morning, we do have 15 minutes after the open. We have the services PMI for the mid to smaller size firms and the non-manufacturing PMI for the larger firms at 9 a.m. Central. So we could get some market moving action 
15 to 30 minutes after the open tomorrow. With that, talk to everyone later. Bye for now.